Hey everyone, my name is Gunther, and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo, where we start work on our doll sheep habitat uh, in our new Arctic Point Zone. Now, there's a lot to be said about this episode. Right off the bat, it's the first one uh, on my return from vacation. So I just came back from vacation, tons of new ideas for new zoos, but I'm going to power through and make sure that we finish Ottawa Zoo. And the first thing we have to do, as always, is going to be about terraforming. And the really cool thing about this one is over the course of the last few weeks, I've really focused on trying to improve my skills when it comes to terraforming and working on creating these really cool, somewhat more realistic mountain ranges. And I think this works so well with the doll sheep because they're an animal that particularly thrives in these mountainous regions. So knowing this, it meant that I really wanted to focus a lot on creating these realistic mountains. And I posted a tutorial, so if you really want to know how to do this, it's a tutorial available for everybody to watch. It's really quick. But the idea behind it, you have to think about how mountains are created, which they're pushed up from the ground, so they come up in layers. Uh, so utilizing the auto paint tool, uh, it allowed me to see where all of these layers were, uh, utilizing that paint tool, and then I just kind of layered rocks all over them. I like the look and the feel and the texture of the rocks, as opposed to just using the paint tool, and really the paint tool is meant there to be a way to supplement it. But in the end, we come together with this really cool, natural looking mountain range that our doll sheep are gonna absolutely love uh, to explore, and that's the important thing, trying to make these realistic habitats. Now, I really agonized over what I was gonna place in this habitat. So even though I said it's a doll sheep, I didn't think it was gonna be a doll sheep when I first started working on it. I was kind of on the fence about it. I was thinking maybe a cougar, before I realized that this is actually kind of tacking on to our Arctic Point area, which is our only sub North American section. So it's part of the Arctic pack, if you will. And I love the idea of maybe creating something for the doll sheep. It's gonna be unique and it's fun. And really for all of our new players, because as we all know, uh, Planet Zoo and Frontier has announced that Planet Zoo has finally come in console. And I know a lot of people have been asking for that. I'm really happy to see that come together because I really wanna see all these new players building new things. So if you are a console player that has stumbled the process video, number one, welcome to the Planet uh, Zoo experience. Uh, and number two, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not know what you're going to build. And part of the fun of playing Planet Zoo is just having fun. It's experiencing and experimenting with new things, stretching your imagination to create new items or new ways of thinking about it. And everybody's going to have new ways of thinking when it comes to Planet Zoo. So I'm really excited to see how you build your habitats. If you're new to the game, let me know in the comments below and feel free to share any of your builds, things like that. I'm always interested to learn new things and everybody's gonna to come to the table with a new thought process. It doesn't matter how new or experienced or unexperienced you are when it comes to this game, everybody's gonna have new things and new ways to look about it. And I think this really kind of shows right here. I'm not a fan of working with rocks. Uh, the one downside of working with rocks is there's not a lot of them, especially bigger ones, so they're not, really a lot of variety, but it's amazing what you can do with what you have. And I'm really excited to see what other people can do because it stretches your comfort zone. Get out of that comfort zone, you're gonna create something new, something really cool. And I like to think that this whole shelter that we've kind of put together is really cool. I'm really excited about it. So with the majority of our rock work and tour forming completed, it's time for us to start working on our guest barrier. And what better way to start your guest barrier than to create your platform to work on? So for me, I like the use of these concrete panels. It's super easy to make viewing platforms like this. And because they're smaller pieces, it means that you can actually work with a lot of curves. Because as you know, Ottawa Zoo is all about curves and it's not a city zoo, so we're trying to go with something that's a little bit more natural. So these littler pieces actually help with that. Now on top of that, we also need to create a barrier. I've created tons of guest barriers on uh, Ottawa Zoo. You've seen a lot of them, so I'm trying not to bore you. I'm trying to new, do new things every single time, uh, which is a struggle for me. But the really cool thing is I built this on stream. So if you wanna have a say in how these guest barriers look, or maybe you have a really cool way of improving it, uh, let me know. In this case, I actually utilized some stained wood pieces to get a more black look uh, for the base. So this is gonna be like where the glass hooks in. But on top of that, I also wanted to add in these really cool children's viewing platforms. So as we know, children are very short. I'm very tall, I'm six feet. Uh, most children are not six feet, so they can't see over these barriers. And nobody wants to see through glass all the time. So while I was on vacation in Mexico, I actually had the chance to go see a wildlife preserve. I, I don't know if that's actually what it is, but it was pretty cool, it's a smaller zoo. But they had these really cool children's viewing stations. 
And all it was is they created the step for children to step onto so they can look over the barrier. I thought it was such a cool idea, something really small. So I tried to emulate it in uh, Ottawa Zoo. Of course, this is the first time I've done it. As always, the first time you do something, it's never gonna look that great. And I think we're only going to improve from here, but it's a really cool concept. And I wanted it to show it off to you guys. You've seen barriers all the time, but creating something that's more kid friendly is new for me. Now, if you have any tips on that, let me know because it's definitely going to improve and I am always open to learning new things. Now, speaking of new things, we have the rear of our habitat. I do not want this to be a viewing station for our guests. I really want them to come to the front because I have new plans for another habitat on the back half here. So knowing that I created this like log barrier that's gonna be act as a solid barrier. Guests should not be able to view through it. Reality is they probably will still look through it, but we end up with this. And then it's time to work on foliage. And you've seen me work on it before. Start with some buffalo grass, add in some bushes, add in some trees, and finally add in some rocks. Now, the really cool thing here is after I built all of this, I was looking for some snow piles on the Planet Zoo workshop. I wanted to create like these fake snow piles. And I stumbled across this really cool blueprint from Caesar Creates, which is just a more natural looking rock uh, bunch, I guess a bundle of rocks, if you will. Um, so I did go through and replace them. Huge fan of this piece. So you're gonna see a lot more of it, but I do apologize. It didn't make it to the episode because I was doing it while I was just kind of cleaning up a lot of these smaller details. But I am gonna do a tour, so you're gonna see what they look like because I think there's a lot of really cool things that we've done in this episode that I really wanna show off and I wanna kind of acknowledge because it's not just my idea. A lot of it came from the community uh, to help out. So I wanna make sure that we give shout outs to everybody who helped provide those ideas. Now, you're used to seeing me create these really cool backstage areas. And for this habitat, there isn't really a backstage area. If anything, it's kind of more like a ranger station in the sense that there's a place here for our staff to create their food or to you know prepare uh, to help out with the, uh, the care of our new doll sheep. But I also needed a place to kind of host some additional electrical work and stuff like that. So it's not really a backstage area. Like I said, it's more like a ranger station. But even so, it's still a small building. It uses up quite a bit of the space, which I'm really happy with. It breaks up all of those lines. It's not about having just a natural barrier everywhere. Having a building kind of really breaks it up a little bit. And this is the end result. And I'm actually quite happy with how this worked together because again, I didn't have a plan. It's not always about having a plan as evident by utilizing these different stone pieces. Normally you see me utilize a lot of the dry stone pieces. Uh, and in this case, I went with more European stone. I actually love the way this looks, uh, but again, it wasn't part of the original plan. And that's why you're seeing it happen after the fact. Now, part of the reason why it's happening after the fact is I knew I wanted to place a building here. So on stream, I actually plopped down a building initially just to kind of fill up the space. So I kind of had an idea where I was building everything. The downside of doing that means I have to go through and build everything on my own uh, one at a time. So there's always a learning experience here. Now, knowing all of this, I think we need to acknowledge a few elephants in the room. The Ottawa Zoo is coming to a close we are very close to seeing the end of Ottawa Zoo, more so because I've built everything I've wanted to build here. And now I really wanna go and try some new things. I mentioned earlier that I came back from vacation. I have a lot of really cool ideas for new zoos, and I'm really excited to kind of do them, different architecture styles, because this is something I'm really comfortable with. So now it's time for me to stretch my skills. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. I know there's a few other zoos on the channel, but I'm thinking we're gonna start with something completely new. But that being said, I would love to get your thoughts and what you would like to see from a new zoo perspective. Are you fans of city zoos? Are you fans of more natural looking zoos? You let me know because maybe this will help me to shape our next zoo. And I'm always open for additional feedback and ideas. Now, speaking of additional feedback and ideas, there's something I've always struggled with when it comes to putting your buildings together, which are creating more natural looking roofs. Uh, more so because I'm not really comfortable with utilizing the roof pieces, which I think comes back to the idea that I just don't play around with it a whole lot. But for the first time ever, I think I've built something I'm really happy with. Maybe because it's a unique design and there's some additional features that we do and we add to it, but I'm really happy with what we put together from a roof perspective for our new ranger station. And I realize I call it a ranger station, it's not a ranger station, but it's like the best way I can describe what this building is. Now, that being said, I've used something for what its intended purpose is for the first time ever. 
which are these gutters. And it took me forever to figure out what they were called in the game. Uh, we call them eaves troughs. So I keep on looking for eaves or troughs and I can never find it because they're called gutters. And it's a really small thing for me to complain about, but maybe it's that language aspect of it, which is like, these are not called gutters where I am. They are called eaves troughs. But that being said, it's the first time I've ever played with them. And I'm actually kind of happy with how they turn out because I love the way this looks. And it's such a small piece, but it adds so much power to your overall build that I am shocked that I've never played with them the way they're being used before. Now, we are pretty much at the end of our speed build. Now, I did say at the very beginning, there is going to be a tour on this episode because there's a lot of stuff I really want to show off. And one of the things I've never really shown on camera before or built in any way on camera before is how I fill in all these empty areas. So uh, with that being said, here's a really quick way of adding in some foliage. Now, while this all happens, I'm going to get ready for our live tour of our new doll sheep habitat. And just like that, it's time for our really quick live tour of our new doll sheep habitat. And I figured the best place probably to start off would be at our Arctic Point sign, which uh, has yet to see a revamp. It is the OG sign, if you will. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to start our path towards our new habitat. And I gotta say, the full hitch really kind of brings everything together. Just adding this all in, which took a long time, especially with adding on like all like the moss pieces on the ground. Uh, it adds in so much additional character to the entire area, and then it just it fills it all in. And I gotta say, it's starting to really look like a real zoo. I'm really happy with this. But as we kind of pull up, we see our doll sheep habitat. We have seven doll sheep, uh, female doll sheep in our habitat, uh, yet to find a male to add in because really the goal is to uh, to start breeding and, you know, uh, assisting from conservation perspectives. But you got to say, I just I love the way they look. They're so they're so cute, they're just so adorable. <laughs> uh, I really love this habitat. I'm not going to lie. It's probably my best rock work and mountain work yet. You can see a lot of foliage and greenery, like kind of just sprouting up from all the cracks and crevices on our mountain piece. And you can even see this is the rock piece that I was talking about from Caesar Create. So I've added those in just everywhere. And I got to say, they add so much additional flavor to the entire build. I am super happy with how that, uh, that came out. If you're looking for it, I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can also uh, start utilizing it because it is a new favorite rock piece of mine. I, I really love the way it works. We have our education sign, nothing too fancy, very similar to what we've uh, used in the rest of the Arctic Point, which is like the uh, the ship piece and then some bordering, not too uh, not too fancy. But as we kind of continue, we have an Easter egg that I just added for fun because I believe 99% uh, positive that this is going to be where our next habitat is going to go. Not sure what we're going to put here just yet. I think there's a, a lot of, uh, of debate on what we want to add in from an animal. I would love to get your feedback on what you guys would love to see here as well, but you can kind of see our uh, little excavator has uh, already started digging out the habitat ground. Um, so uh, feel free to, uh, to give me your recommendations. I would, I would really appreciate that because uh, I uh, I'm not sure what I want to put there yet. Maybe a cougar, who knows? But as we kind of continue, we can see our little uh, stools, which are for our, our children, our uh, kid guests, our guests who are children, if you will, to stand up so they can kind of view in and all oh, look at that double sheep right there. Just taking a nap, perfect place to take a nap. Uh, and then we can kind of see the rest of the habitat. Now, huge shout out as well to Sparrow and that Aussie bloke uh, for the idea of adding in uh, a snow machine. Um, kind of adds a little bit of additional flavor to the entire build, kind of giving it the idea that they're uh, putting a lot of snow down and because uh, doll sheep uh, do thrive in that tundra environment. Now, the downside is I couldn't find any like snow piles. And I'm thinking maybe we could make them with like the faux rock pieces and just layer them everywhere to kind of create that fake snow. And maybe I'll play around with it, but I, I don't know. Uh, if you have a thought on how to create fake snow in this game, um, let me know, because I would love to get your thoughts. Now, as we kind of continue, lots of educational signs again, a lot of uh, donation bins, because we are in franchise mode. And then as we kind of continue up our uh, rather steep hill, which is the only downside of this, build is uh, is how steep this hill gets uh we have our ranger station and i'm pretty happy with how this ranger station turned out i love the eaves trough i just gotta say a uh, huge fan of just adding up some eaves trough and like, just like the the unique style and stuff like that it's bolted to the side you can kind of see there's a little bit of a drain uh catching all the water so it doesn't pool but we're gonna go in our staff only area and as we kind of enter in we have a lot going on here we have a window. We have a few windows looking into the habitat itself. 
really just for our uh, our keepers and stuff like that they can maybe keep an eye on um we also have a door so we go through the door right here it allows us to maybe go and do some maintenance on our snow machine so we'll go back through and then we have the rest of our habitat. So we have our power station, which kind of goes right here and then another window. So we can kind of view out and see, oh, look at that. Perfect. See a little doll sheep right there. <laughs> and then we have our keeper hut with another window kind of facing into the guest area. Uh, again, maybe uh, a new, uh, some foliage or maybe another habitat over there. And then as we were to leave, I've connected this to the rest of our uh, Arctic point. So we also have room for another habitat right here. So let me know in your thoughts uh, on what you uh, would like to see here from an animal perspective. Uh, but as we kind of continue, I'm just gonna give a little bit of a jog. We also have this little side path with this little bump right here. So this is to uh, stop the uh, guests from going down this way, uh, which uh, I kind of like it because it's almost like it's like a water trap. So it prevents water from flowing through. Uh, but we have the, uh, the backstage area for our reindeer. So I thought that was pretty fitting that it's uh, kind of connected back up again. Really happy with how that, uh, that turned out. But that is it for this uh, live tour. So it was short and sweet because I don't want to ruin the full tour uh, once Ottawa Zoo is uh, officially complete. Now, if you really like this uh, video, if maybe you learned some things or if you're really happy with the direction we're going, feel free to subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. You can also leave a like or drop a comment. Uh, all of that really helps me out. Let me know I'm doing a good job or it helps me to improve. So your feedback is always welcome. I always enjoy reading your feedback um, and uh, it helps me to improve. So I really appreciate that. Otherwise, as always, everybody, ciao for now.